Hi there. Welcome to my lecture speech. So today I'm going to be talking about why LeBron James is the best NBA player of all time. So first off, we need to establish the categories that we're going to be judging him on for this debate. Just saying someone is the greatest of all time doesn't suffice. We need specific categories that can, we can judge upon and compare. The first category to look at is the individual career performance. Showing how much of an impact the player makes can easily start with just looking at their statistics. These are measurements of efficiency, scoring, and just objective statistics that can showcase how a player plays on average. The second category is team performance with player on the team. This shows how much of a leader a player is on their team and if greatness comes with them. Statistics can definitely show something, but it's also important to look at how their team plays. If a team is worse, a player could achieve a higher level of performance since there is no one else to score or rebound the ball. At the end of the day, we are measuring who is the best at winning the game of basketball and not just one aspect of their games. Thirdly, we can look at team performance with player of the, off the team to also get a look at how much they were impacting the team. Lastly, basketball is a game that can come down to huge moments at the end of games, and it is why it is known as a make or miss league. Teams can trade baskets, and the only one that matters is the last shot at the end of the game. So clutch moments matter a ton. So first we have LeBron's individual performance. The only person who is in the real conversation with LeBron in order of statistics is Michael Jordan. In fact, most might even argue that Jordan is the best player of all time. The reason for this is that Michael has the advantage in NBA championships, league MVPs, points per game, and free throw percentage. LeBron on the other hand beats Michael in all NBA first team selections per game statistics for rebounds, assists, blocks, and overall field goal percentage. Not to mention LeBron is the only player in NBA history with 30,000 points, 8,000 assists, and 8,000 rebounds. LeBron James is the best all-around player and has remained in the top five players in the league for the last 17 years. No player has ever maintained this condition going into being 36. Now we have LeBron's team performance while having him on the team. This is probably the area that puts LeBron into the number one spot for me. Scoring could be debatable between some different players. When solely looking at the player's ability to get to win games, LeBron is sensational. LeBron has now won 39 playoff series, which puts him in second place behind a retired Hall of Fame player named Derek Fisher. Even though LeBron was much more instrumental in these series than Fisher, it doesn't even matter as he will probably pass him this year. LeBron also has 10 finals appearances with three different teams. Talk about impact. He comes to a team at, and that team makes the finals. LeBron has never missed a single postseason game and averages over 42 minutes a night. For reference, a game with no overtime is only 48 minutes long. According to basketball reference, James has been his team's outright leader in points, rebounds, and assists in the NBA finals seven times. Only three other players in league history have accomplished this feat even once, and they've only done it once. Also, none of these players include Michael Jordan. So third, we have LeBron's team's performance while not having him on the team. When Michael Jordan finally decided to retire back in 1993, you'd think that the team would be much worse. However, the Jordanless Bulls of 1993 to 1994 went on to have a 55 and 27 season, which is only two wins short of the previous season when Jordan was a part of that team. LeBron is nowhere close to the same. After leaving the Cavs in 2009, they went on to be 19 and 63, even though the previous year they had put the best record in the league of 21 and 20, uh, 61 and 21 with LeBron. After he left the Heat back in 2014, they went from a losing in the NBA finals to putting up a, a record of mere 37 and 45. During that same year, LeBron went back to Cleveland and took a team that was 33 and 49 the previous year and took them to the NBA Finals four years in a row. Then after those four years, he leaves again and, go, and they go back to 19 and 63. Clearly LeBron is insanely valuable to teams and is a clear difference maker. And if that wasn't all enough, 
He then came to LA after to the LA Lakers and takes a team that is 35 and 47 and wins a championship the second year he was there, which was the first year he wasn't injured with the Lakers. With LeBron's teams are with LeBron, teams are championship contenders. Without him, they're often bar, bottom of the barrel. And lastly, we have LeBron is clutch. Like I stated before, basketball is a sport where because there's so much scoring, each individual basket is worth less. So a layup at the beginning of the game, game isn't really worth that much. It's no coincidence that so many games come down to a last shot. You would think that would be pretty improbable that games would come down to a buzzer beater with teams scoring north of like 100 points in a game. However, tempo of the game and competitiveness leads games to come down to one shot. So clutch players are really the difference makers in games. LeBron James has more game winning buzzer beaters in the playoffs than any player in history, including more than Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant combined. LeBron also has the NBA's highest career scoring average in game sevens, which is 34.9 points per game and elimination games. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, James is 39 and 11 in his career in closeout games, the best record by a player in NBA postseason history. LeBron is the king. They call him King James for a reason. While LeBron being the best scorer of all time is debatable, I believe that being the best all being the best all around player isn't. LeBron is inspiring to so many and a personal hero of mine. I'm not even a fan of any of the teams that he has won with and have continuously rooted against him in the finals, yet still love him and respect him at the same time. He's the best of all time and his career isn't even over yet. Who knows, with his new movie coming out, maybe he could be the best actor of all time too. Thanks for listening.